Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments with a continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And if you're not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, I advise you do. If you want to boost your Excel formula game. This is challenge 178, root cipher. Something interesting, you know, trying to encrypt a certain word, make it look like something else. Well, let's read it and see. Okay, so we have a couple of strings. We have n, so some integers, and we have the expected answer. So how do we move from here and these two columns, column A and B, to get C? So let's take an example. Encrypt the given strings. You will need to ignore spaces, okay, while encrypting. All right, so we need to get rid of spaces. So it now takes a string. So the string here is what Marshall truth, and n is three. So what do you do? So you take the string, you ignore the um, spaces and then you break the text into three columns so you can see how it's broken down after getting rid of the spaces so you have m in the first column m a r you know okay all right so once you break it down this way how do you get the final answer you now start to stack it up column wise so meaning that once you have it broken down the way it is here the encrypted value will now be you take m s l o s so you take column one first you know, stack that, and stack two, stack three, and then you form one long string. Okay, well, I guess the, the point is really breaking it down into a certain number of columns. That's your N here, right? Once you get the result that way, then you read it from column to column, and you stack it up, you know, that way. Right, so that's after you've gotten rid of the spaces. Okay, so there are a couple of ways, but the logic is basically, you know, the same. Let's take maybe one of them. Let's look at this one where it says uh, bridge on the river choir. So, okay, what you do first of all is you may want to do, you know, like a substitute, right? So you can substitute here and you say, take out the space and give me nothing, right? So this is everything pretty much. Now, within this, you can then extract, you know, all the alphabets one after the other, right? So let's assume I made this a variable. I could then come in here. And then do mid of a use a sequence function you could use the row function to len of a right this is just extracting character by character right so this is pretty much everything you've broken it down this way but now based on the n you have here n here is five because n is five you now want to break this into five columns so a couple of ways to do it but the first function that comes to my mind is to use the wrap rows, okay? Which would then say, okay, fine, how many columns if I wrap to the next row? Then I can feed it with the five. So what I can do is over this, I will just overlay this, okay? So here before the mid, right, I'm going to do my wrap rows, okay? So I'm going to do wrap rows. So take that whole expression and then it says, okay, fine, wrap count, meaning how many columns do I have per row? Take that as this. I know that you may not feel it exactly. The mathematics may not always work. So if I have, you know, some boxes that are not filled with anything, what do I want to do there? I may want to show, you know, a blank. Okay. So I close the wrap rows and then I close the let. So now you see it's broken down into. It just looks like this one works perfectly, but let me change this five, for example, to six. Okay. So you see what happens, right? So you see the grid and you can see that there are some blanks. Okay. So let's take this back to five. So once you have this, now you need to then concatenate them, but you need to go column wise. Okay, so I can use to call, and what I will do for to call is that I will say bring everything back into one column. But when you are going, you know, you need to do it column by column, not row by row, right? So it means I can come in here and I can do to call, right? That's the array, everything there. Let's see. Then I'll say ignore blanks. Okay, good. And then the next thing I would say scan by column. So it goes column by column. So I do one there. So close that to call, close the let. So this is everything. Now you can then concatenate so that you can have just one string pretty much, right? So that's that. Then, you know, you kind of have, you know, the answers, right? Pretty much. And that's it. So the only thing you want to do here is if you want to do it, you know, in one cell and have it spill. 
that's the only thing that is different but that's a solution here already you know that works and if you want to do that there are so many ways to approach it but it's basically the same idea you're going to be using the substitute in there somewhere you know whether you use it first of all or you use it somewhere later it's basically a decision you know if you work it out so what i can do is i can use the map function right because i want to perform a particular type of transformation you know on each of the cells within the ranges that i have so i could do this i could say map i give this as my a right and then i give this as my b but at the same time i could save myself you know some stress down the line by first of all even getting rid of the spaces in the a2 to a7 okay because at the end of the day i know i don't need spaces for anything so what i could do is that for the map i could give it you know that substitute and here i substitute in everything and say space and give me nothing so basically what you're going to get here is you're going to get an array you know that has all those strings that you can see all of them oh sorry yeah they disappeared i think i need to get rid of this uh let me just put an apostrophe here first of all and then let's get rid of this bar always looks very ugly <laughs> i didn't notice it at first okay so let's look at the substitute portion again okay so now you can see right so those are the strings in there you can see that none of them contain spaces so the substitute already works so that's going to be you know my first um variable into the map all right or first array then the second array is going to be um you know i can give it the n right so n is going to be the second one I'm missing something here i think it's a full stop yeah okay so those are the two um inputs to the map so i go into the lambda portion of course, because I gave two inputs, it means that I need to have two variables here. Whatever you want to call them, A or B, X and Y. The point is that A represents everything in A2 to A7 after the substitute has done its work. Then B represents those numbers, the ends you have in P2 to P7. Okay. So now that you've done this, you can then go into the calculation portion. What's the first thing you need to do? First of all, you need to get, you know, the string more or less right which is where we use the mid to kind of strip out everything that we need so i could come in here and just do you know mid now mid of what what is my text my text is actually a and then i do the same thing sequence len of a right comma one so this would give me all the characters character by character in you know the text that i have there okay so that's going to um, you know, perform that. Now, after I have done that, what do I want to do? After I get these strings, you know, character by character, I will then do a wrap, which is where I take it from one column into multiple columns. So I do here, you know, wrap rows, right? And it asks me for the wrap count. The wrap count is the number of columns that it's going to go through before it wraps to the next one. Don't forget, you have already said B should represent these counts okay so whenever you say b at this point you know you are referring to whatever number you have for that particular element that it's looking at okay now for the part width which is where you are not able to fill a rectangle you put you know the blank okay i've solved this before so why i mean by solved this before i solved this in this video so i'm really just implementing the same idea okay so once i've done this now i have it in multiple columns now I need to bring it back into one column. The only thing that needs to happen is how am I bringing it back? Okay, that's where I use the to call. For those of you that remember what I did, I used the to call. And for the to call, there are two things we need to do. We need to ignore blanks and we also need to go column by column. That way, you know, it kind of stacks it in the right way we want. Okay, and then once you do this, now the expression is in one column, right? But now you then need to use a concat to concatenate it. Okay, so now we close the concat, we close the lambda, we close the map. I think we should be fine. Okay, and it looks like we are good. And so now we have a one formula expression, you know, that gives us basically the same thing. But yes, I decided to show it in one cell, first of all, that you can drag down, drag whichever way, and then have it in one cell and have it spill. Like I said, there are a couple of ways you can approach this. You could have instead of putting the substitute here you know you could have done just a2 to a7 and somewhere within the lambda calculation you kind of do the substitute it's really you know um you know one and the same in some sense 
And this is how most people solved it. There was another interesting approach, you know, which used, you know, just a sequence function. But I think I will leave that for now and just, you know, stick this out there. There are so many ways to solve it. So I trust that in the comment section, people will post, you know, varying solutions. But it's more around, you know, seeing how a lot of these new functions, you know, can be combined together, you know, to get to a solution. Look at how here we've used, you know, two call with the wrap rules and sequence and with the lambdas to get, you know, an efficient solution. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.